Hello everyone and welcome to my rather messy office. My name is Oscar Scafidi, I am a travel writer. So I'm here in Tunisia with Brat Travel Guides who are a UK publisher and I am currently writing the Brat Travel Guide to Tunisia, the first edition. Getting a carte de séjour or residency permit here in Tunisia is a kind of confusing and difficult process. Uh, and it's even more difficult if you're a freelancer, so someone who's self-employed and only works with organizations or clients outside of Tunisia. Although actually right now I'm stuck in my apartment in Tunis because we're in the middle of a four day lockdown and we're not allowed to go anywhere. I moved here to Tunis in August 2019 and I spent the next 13 months unsuccessfully trying to apply for a carte de séjour. This involved countless trips to police stations and various ministries dotted around Tunis. Also involved a lot of filling out paperwork in both French and Arabic. I can speak enough French to be able to explain to government officials exactly what I'm trying to do and I have a Tunisian friend here who helped me out when it came to translation into Arabic or filling out forms in Arabic. Thank you very much Omar. Despite all of this, I was unsuccessful, so after 13 months I did not get a cap decision. It seems like I'm not the only person to have this problem here in Tunisia. So looking through some of the expat forums on Facebook, you see the same issue repeated again and again. So lots of people are asking questions about this problem. And let's have a look. Here's a few of them here just from the past few months. So I thought that today I would use my lockdown time here productively and I'd make a video explaining to people how you can get a carte de séjour as a freelancer here in Tunisia. Now, let me warn you right at the beginning. This is not a simple process, but it is quite a well-defined process. I began this process on the 28th of September 2020. I got my temporary carte de séjour by the 12th of November. So what's that, like two weeks later? And I just received my full carte de séjour uh, in the first week of January. So there we go. That's what we're aiming for. Overall, the process took about three months, which is much better than the 13 months I wasted trying to do it back when I first arrived. If you are self-employed and you want to get a carte de séjour as quickly as possible and you don't want to go through the process that I'm about to outline, or you simply don't have the time, uh, then please uh, click up here and you can skip ahead to the end of the video where I'm going to recommend a lawyer who can sort this whole thing out for you very quickly and at a reasonable price. A quick disclaimer before we get started. As I said at the beginning, I am a travel writer. I am not a lawyer, an accountant, or an immigration or tax expert. And for that reason, the contents of this video is for informational purposes only. Please don't construe any of it as legal, tax, immigration, or financial advice. Right, enough with the disclaimer. Let's get on with explaining how you can get yourself a carte de séjour as a freelancer in Tunisia. I'd like to start by defining what the exact problem is with applying for a cap de séjour as a freelancer. If you already know, you've already gone through it, then I guess you can skip ahead to the next section where I explain the solution. Foreigners wishing to live and work in Tunisia need a cap de séjour. So a cap de séjour, or a residency permit, is required for all foreigners residing in Tunisia for more than three consecutive months or for six non-consecutive months in one year. Now, the main problem is if you want to come here to Tunisia uh, and work as a freelancer, then the Directorate General of National Security and the Ministry of Interior is going to want to see a work contract and a supporting letter from your employer here in Tunisia. And if we have a look on the website, this is what I'm talking about. Now, if you're self-employed, this is impossible. If you work for companies exclusively outside Tunisia, this is also impossible. Now, I tried presenting supporting letters from one of my clients, and that is, of course, Brat Travel Guides. Uh, however, they are a UK-based company, and the Ministry of Interior just wouldn't accept this. So they wanted a letter from Brat Travel Guides' Tunisian branch. And as you can imagine, they don't have a Tunisian branch because they are a UK-based company. They only have a UK branch. So many self-employed people hoping to live and work in Tunisia do not have a Tunisian branch of their company. So the main problem is that Tunisian immigration regulations are really not set up for freelancers, digital nomads or self-employed people who want to move here and work. As you can see from the website here that explains the different categories of carte de séjour application, there's really five categories. So the first one is for people moving here to work for a company based in Tunisia. It's pretty straightforward. You can just get your employer to sort that out. Uh, second one is for people moving here to study. And again, of course, you can get a letter of support from the institution that you're studying at here in Tunisia. The third one is for people getting married here. Fourth one is for retirees. And then the fifth category is for investors setting up a Tunisian company. 
As you can see, freelancers don't easily drop into any of those categories. The solution was actually in the guidance all along. It was in category five. I needed to set up a Tunisian company, and then I needed to use that company in order to apply for my CAF de séjour. Quick disclaimer again, I'm gonna have to apologize for my French pronunciation, but there's a lot of different French terms, business terms uh, throughout this application process, so I'm just gonna butcher them all for you. Uh, in terms of what kind of company I was setting up, I was setting up an Enterprise Individuelle. There are lots of other categories, um, but that's the one that I went for. In three steps, register a company, issue myself a work permit, apply for a carte de séjour using that permit. This whole process can be completed in a few weeks via the one-stop shop at the Agence de Promotion de l'Industrie et de l'Innovation, uh, which is the Agency for the Promotion of Industry and Innovation. Uh, from now on, uh, for the sake of brevity, I'm just going to call it the APII throughout the presentation. Uh, and that's on the Rue de Syrie in Tunis. I'll show you here on Google Maps. It's pretty easy to find. This one-stop shop is a great idea to encourage investment in Tunisia. Uh, and in one building, you have representatives from all the different ministries and areas that are gonna need to give you stamps and permits and bits of paper in order to get yourself a carte de séjour. Uh, that includes the customs agencies, the Ministry of Vocational Training and Employment, and the Ministry of Finance. Let's get going and set ourselves up a company. Step number one is choosing a company name. The way that you do this is you go onto the Registre National des Entreprises. Uh, here's the website. Uh, you click through, you set up an account with them, and then you basically register the name of the company that you want. And of course it will check to make sure that that name hasn't already been taken by another Tunisian company. Uh, once you've been through this whole process, uh, which is free of charge, then you should be issued with a certificate, which is a Certificat de Réservation d'un Nom Commercial. And let me show you what that looks like. There you go, we've got the RNE up there, you get a QR code over here. Obviously I've covered it all up because this is mine, but that is the certificate that you need to generate for yourself and print out. Step number two is to choose a company address. Of course, your company needs to be based somewhere and you're going to need to write up an attestation de domiciliation, I think. I think, which basically says the address of your company. Um, that's gonna give your name, your passport number, the company name, and the company address. Uh, as freelancers, a lot of people work from home, so they would be tempted to give their home address for this registration. You need to check with your landlord whether that's allowed, because some rental agreements don't actually allow the registration of businesses at a residential address, so make sure that that's okay um, before you put that down. So attached to the attestation, you should also put your rental agreement. Uh, so a copy of your rental agreement, and that needs to have a stamp on it from your local municipalité, which is basically your local council. Uh, you should already have a rental agreement that has that stamp on it, because you should have gone and got it stamped when you first rented a property uh, in Tunisia. So that's not like an extra piece of work, or at least it shouldn't be. There's no fixed format or form for the attestation, so really, I mean, you just write it up on Word or whatever and print it out. Just make sure it includes all of those key details that they're looking for. Okay, step number three. Now we need to actually go and register our company on the APII website. In this process, we are, via the website, telling APII that we intend to invest in Tunisia by setting up a Tunisian company. Uh, and at the end of this process, they are gonna generate you another certificate that you need, and this one is called the Attestation de Dépôt de Déclaration d'Investiment. No, that's wrong. <laughs> Let's try that again. It's called an Attestation de Dépôt de Déclaration d'Investissement. Maybe that's better, who knows. Um, let me show you what one of those certificates looks like. There we go. Again, I have covered up all the personal details because they're mine, but it also has a big QR code up there, which people are gonna wanna see. And essentially it explains what it is that your company's doing uh, and includes some of the address details. Generating this form is done on the Tunisie Industrie website. Now let's go to that now and have a look under the declaration section. Here's the website. I'll be sure to include a link to it in the description below. But basically it will automatically generate you a dossier number, like a username. So just make a note on that. You then put in your password, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whatever. Uh, 
then in terms of uh, qualité, you are going to say that you are the promoter, so you're the actual person setting this up. You are not a representative of the organisation. Uh, in terms of the nature of the project, obviously we are creating a company, so that's création. Uh, and in terms of the form juridique, that's like what type of company you're setting up. Um, I set up an entreprise individuelle. Um, so you click on that one and click to go ahead. Again, if you need help with this process because it is all in French and it does get kind of complicated, uh, click here, you can skip to the end and then I'll recommend a lawyer for you in Tunis. Uh, she can sort this whole thing out for you if you don't want to go through this. But anyway, if you look, there are seven tabs of information that we need to go and fill out over here, uh, starting on page one, where they want all of your identification details, including your passport number and some educational information. Second tab is all about what you're doing. So you're gonna need to have a think about what it is you're doing in Tunisia and fill these in correctly, but if we just scroll down, information on the project, uh, in terms of the investment regime, uh, I registered as a totalement exportateur because I have no Tunisian clients. So all of the work that I do is for entities outside Tunisia. So that's, that's important. And then you can obviously tell them what the nature of the project is, uh, which sector it is. And then once you've selected a sector, it will then let you to kind of select a sub activity to explain what it is that you're doing. Again, you're going to have to have a real careful think about this. Uh, you don't want to mess this up. <laughs> so. We then go through all of the tabs. I won't fill this all out now. This is probably the most complicated. This is probably the most complicated part of the application process, but you get there eventually. And then eventually you are done and you are going to generate yourself the certificate that we're looking for. Now, for step four, you are actually going to have to leave your house. So we are now going to head down to the API and get ourselves a tax identification number. Now, your tax identification number is a matricule fiscale uh, and it is printed on a carte d'identification fiscale, which looks like this. And it's free. Again, I've covered mine up because it's got my details on it, but you get the idea. So it's a small certificate that says you're actually registered with the tax authorities. And that can all be done in the APII building because they have representatives there from the tax authorities. The specific people that are actually going to issue you with that certificate in the building are called the Direction Générale des Impôts at the Ministère des Finances. Right, step five. Now, time to get ourselves a stamp. Anyone who has spent any amount of time in Tunisia will know that the authorities love stamps. Bureaucracy can't get enough of stamps. And now you are gonna join the bureaucracy and get yourself a stamp. The stamp needs to include a certain amount of details. So we're gonna to have to include your name, the name of your business, the registered business address, and your matricule fiscale, so your tax identification number that you were just issued back in step four. Uh, these stamps, which are known as tampon in Tunisia, are really cheap and they're quick to get made, basically in any print shop around town. Uh, you can also find them in some passport photo places and the shops that print license, that print license plates, and they usually cost less than 15 dinars. So that's a really quick thing to get done, step number five. Right, step six, time to print out your company formation documents. So assuming you filled out all of the tabs on the API website correctly in step number four, uh, your company documents should be issued within a few weeks by the Centre National du Registre des Entreprises. Yeah, I know, fantastic pronunciation. Uh, the document that in particular that you want to print out is called the uh, Extra du Registre National des Entreprises. Uh, it actually costs 10 dinars to print this from the website. And let me show you the website now so that you know where to go. So here's the website, uh, you can see it's in French or it's in Arabic and this is where you go to reserve a name and it is also where you can go to get information. So let's go and find some information about our company. Now, whoops, if you click on the registry extract there, all you need to do here is put in your identification number which you were actually issued in step number one when you issued yourself a company name or when you reserve yourself a company name and then it will basically pop up with the details uh, you can put that in your basket and then you can pay 10 dinars to print it 
terms of what it looks like. Again, it's just one of these documents, QR code at the top, all your details down the middle, and I'm not gonna show you mine because it's obviously got some confidential information on there. Right, next step. Step seven, getting a work permit. You need a work permit in order to apply for your CAF de séjour, so that's what we're gonna do next. You are going to apply to the Ministère de la Formation Professionnelle et de l'Emploi, uh, specifically to the Direction Générale du Placement à Étranger et de la Main Ouvre Étranger, whatever that means. Uh, they are also represented at the API One Stop Shop, so to apply for a work permit, you are going to need to give them quite a lot of documentation. Uh, here's some of the stuff you're going to need. First off, you need to give them a filled out application form, and in particular, you are applying for an attestation de non soumission de visa de contrat de travail au nom de Mr. or Mrs. whatever your name is. Uh, if you look online, you'll be able to find a copy of these. You're also going to give them a letter recrutement d'un cadre étranger, which is basically a letter explaining that you are employing a foreign executive. Uh, that explains that your company intends to employ you. I know this sounds a bit weird, you saying you're employing you, but this is the only way of kind of getting around the weird way the Tunisian visa system works. Uh, you can find templates for these letters online. Uh, this is also a fun opportunity for you to use your company stamp. You're also going to need a copy of your attestation de dépôt de déclaration d'investissement. Sorry, d'investissement. This is the certificate we generated in stage number three. You're also going to need a copy of your carte d'identification fiscale, which is your tax identification certificate that we generated in step four. They'll want a copy of your passport, both the identification page and also a color copy of the page with the stamp from when you last came into the country. They're gonna want copies of your professional qualifications and your university diplomas. And they will also want two fiscal stamps of five dinars each. Uh, these are called les timbres fiscaux. Uh, you can buy these all over the place. Uh, let me show you what one looks like. So it looked like that. Um, and yeah, you get them all over the place. You can get them at banks and various other places. Again, if you're not sure, just ask at the API. They're really helpful uh, and they'll sort you out. But yeah, this process uh, costs 10 dinars because you need two of those five dinar stamps. Now, the application form also talks a little about needing a document from CNSS, which is the Tunisian Social Security Department. Uh, in particular, they want copies of your reçu de paiement de la dernière déclaration trimestrielle de la CNSS de l'entreprise, which is basically a, a kind of breakdown of the salary payments that you've made to your employees recently. Um, now, I would clarify with APII whether this is actually relevant in your case, given that the company's only just been formed, so you haven't made any salary payments to anybody. Uh, but anyway, this is what the certificate actually looks like, um, in case you do need to fill one out and just have it blank. Your attestation should only take a few days to arrive from the Ministère de la Formation, and it should look a little bit like this. It's basically just a letter. The two things we're interested in are the stamp with the, sig the stamp there, you paid for it, and then the signature just says attestation at the top and has your company details. Again, that's mine, so we're not gonna look at that too closely. Right, we now have our company and we now have our work permit or attestation. Final stage, stage number eight, let's apply for an actual carte de séjour, so residency permit. You can handle this application, I think it's on the second floor of the API building uh, if you're based in Tunis. Uh, make sure that you check with them exactly what documentation they're gonna want before you go down there. But essentially, they're gonna want a long list of documents that includes an application form, so demande de carte de séjour. They're gonna want four passport photos. They're gonna want a color copy of your passport photo page. They're gonna want a color copy of the stamp in your passport from the last time you entered Tunisia. Uh, they're going to want to see your attestation de dépôt de déclaration d'investissement certificate. They're also going to want to see the certificat de réservation d'un nom commercial, which shows the name of your company. They're going to want your tax identification certificate. Uh, they're going to want your attestation de domicilia. They're going to want your attestation de domiciliation. So saying what the address of your company is. Uh, they're also going to want a copy of your personal rental agreement that shows where you're living. And again, this needs to be stamped at your local municipality. Uh, and lastly, they're going to want to see the actual attestation, so the work permit that you were issued back in step number seven. So you're going to gather all these up, you're going to head down to the API, and you're going to hand them all over. Now, if you turn up with all the correct documents, 
they should issue you with a temporary cap de séjour on the spot, which is fantastic because we are only what, less than two weeks into this process and already we've got ourselves a temporary cap de séjour. Temporary cap de séjour is a pretty flimsy piece of cardboard, has your picture stamped to it and then all your details and it's stamped on the back. But that's a useful document to have because you know if police ask for identification then that's a valid piece of identification to hand over. After that all you need to do is wait a few weeks and they will get in contact and you can head back and collect your actual fancy laminated cap de séjour. There's mine with as many personal details as possible covered up. In conclusion, as I said at the beginning of this video, the process is complicated, uh, but it seems to be better than the alternatives if you're a freelancer. It's a lot simpler than us freelancers trying to explain at some random police station somewhere in Tunis that you're a Bitcoin day trader or a freelance web designer or a photographer working for a US publication or a stringer for a European newspaper, anything like that that really doesn't fit into the current carte de séjour categories. If you go through this whole process yourself, it should cost you less than 200 dinars, uh, excluding your time. So it's going to be 150 dinar cost for the actual application for the carte de séjour. Uh, and the rest is in smaller fees, so for example those kind of uh, fiscal stamp costs, the timbre fisco, and also the cost of getting your actual company stamp made. If this all sounds a bit daunting, then you can just outsource the whole job to a Tunisian lawyer. I would recommend speaking to Haja Ekmila. She is a Tunisian lawyer specialising in business law. Uh, Haja actually owns her own law firm which assists local and foreign companies, NGOs and individuals establishing a presence in Tunisia. I'll include a link to her LinkedIn profile below if you want to get in touch with her. But she speaks perfect English, she's very responsive to emails, and she knows this process very, very well. So if you can't be bothered to do all of this yourself, ask Haja to do it for you. Bonus step nine, other stuff you need to do after you're sorted with your carte de séjour. Now, just because you've been issued the carte de séjour doesn't mean your administrative hassles are completely over. I would recommend getting yourselves a Tunisian accountant so that you can file your Tunisian tax returns correctly now that you actually have uh, this entity in Tunisia. But that's a whole other video for another day, so let's not get into that now. I hope you found this video useful. Uh, if you did, please make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel because it really helps us to grow. And please look out for my new travel guide, the Brat Travel Guide to Tunisia, which is going to come out at some stage in the future. Who knows, I'm currently locked in my apartment and can't go anywhere, so a bit difficult to continue with the research process. But let's hope that we're let out soon, I can continue traveling, and then we'll get the book done. Bye.